Heads up, fellow rogues got a huge announcement starting now. Every single weekday, there'll be brand new content at themodernrogue.com. Articles from some of my favorite writers covering everything from history's greatest counterfeits to insane smuggling schemes to how to talk about beer without sounding like a total jerk. Even articles explaining how your brain is out to betray you. Subscribe on your RSS reader and most importantly, spread the word and share with your friends. It's all at themodernrogue.com. That was weird in Creepshow. It's Creepshow 2. And, and why was the Cigar Store Indian mad? I don't remember, but probably because people kept, uh, you know, I don't know, taking his land. <laughs> but propping him up outside of a smoke shop. I think there's an entire people who are pretty justifiably pissed off. I think he wanted a cigar. He's like, all I wanted was a cigar. <laughs> Not going to murder all these people so I can have it. Thanks for the ride, lady. <laughs> no, oh, that's for the other one. It's a different then creature. the tar too. jumps over. The tar. Like roaches come out. <laughs> that was one. See, I that know. Was okay. <laughs> How to smoke a cigar. All right, and we're back at Roma Craft to Back with Skip. How are you guys doing? And Michael. All right, last time we learned the fundamentals about the plants and the different sizes and shapes and the theory behind there cigar was smoking. science to oh it. Oh my God, yeah. Most importantly, how not to be a chooch. <laughs> but now it's all about the practice. You've hand selected four of your brands for us to experience. So what you guys have here is this is the Intemperance EC18 Virtue. It is a four and three quarter by 52 Robusto. So I know what this means. Four and three quarter refers to the length by 52. 52 60 fourths of an inch is the ring gauge ring on gauge. it. That's correct. And, and it's a um, it's a, not the baby Huey kind, it's the other kind. Parejo. That's right. Parejo. Just like I said. <laughs> so this cigar was manufactured in our factory. Nick Fabrica de Tobacco's Nico Sueño in Esteli, Nicaragua. It has a wrapper from Ecuador, Connecticut. It's a shade grown Ecuador, Connecticut. The binder is from Indonesia, Basuki. And the filler is from two regions in Nicaragua and one region in Dominican Republic. Man, I'm a world traveler. Look at me. What, what about you? What you got? This one is a, uh, a Figurado. That's correct. This is a small Perfecto or short Perfecto. It's five by 50. This cigar is also manufactured in our factory. It has a wrapper from Brazil called Brazil Araparaca. This brand of intemperance is called the BA21. The 18 comes from the 18th Amendment that started Prohibition. The 21 comes from the 21st Amendment that ended Prohibition. The filler in this cigar is also Nicaraguan and Dominican. The binder is from Indonesia. So these two bookend our intemperance brand. We have a third called Whiskey Rebellion. But these are one of the, the very first cigar that we came out with as a company back in 2010. And I remember this part. I should ask, uh, uh, talk to me about the body of these. Not that I'm a chooch. I'm not trying to be pretentious. <laughs> sure, but... no, that's a, you know enough to ask the right questions. So this cigar here, the EC18, the Virtue, is a medium flavor, medium bodied, medium strength cigar. See, this is ideal for yours truly. The 52 ring gauge it allows a good balance between the filler and the wrapper. Uh, and you're gonna get a consistent, nuanced, kind of complex uh, flavor profile all the way through. This Figurado, on the other hand, is a little bit stronger, a little bit more exotic. The wrapper is from Brazil. It, it is equally kind of medium to medium full in strength, but full flavored. So it's gonna seem stronger. You're gonna get more flavor on the mouth and a little bit more uh, acridity in the aroma. But because it's a Perfecto, it starts as a small ring gauge. You get a lot of the wrapper flavor. As you get to the middle, you get more of the filler flavor. And then as you kind of go back down, you go more back balanced towards the, the wrapper. Now, Michael, you were talking about how to choose one of these, like how how long you're going to be spending or what yeah. you're going to be doing <laughs> while you're smoking. So, you know, let's say, for example, you, you know, hey, you want to come over, we're going to cook out, we're going to be on a patio or, you know, just in the cigar lounge, you know, hanging out with your buddies, you know, it's called what we call a herf. So, you know, multiple people come over and we get together and kind of trade cigars. So there's a whole subculture of, of uh, cigar smokers and where they go. So let's say, you know, you've got about 45 minutes or an hour, you, you're going to watch, you know, some of the football game or whatever. Now that you kind of have your place selected of where you're going to go, now you're going to cut and light and enjoy the cigar. So there's different kinds of situations. For example, if you're out mowing the lawn, you probably don't want something that's quite as robust or, or nuanced as if you are sitting with your friends, giving your full sure. attention sure. to the cigar that you're smoking. Do you want to have a robust cigar during while you're doing some manual labor probably not you know you want something a little lighter and 
you know, something that's going to get you through that process, right? Yeah, and you probably want to decide uh, what you're pairing it with. Like, if you're going to be drinking beer, if you're going to sure. be drinking scotch. Right, a great example. You're drinking an IPA. This IPA is a very crisp, sharp, a little bit of a sour kind of note to it. It's actually not a great beer to pair with an Ecuador, Connecticut. Mm. <laughs> you chooch. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, man, they, they gave it to me. They gave it to me. You can't force a chooching on somebody. <laughs> but it does meet the two basic criteria, which was it was free and it's cold. See, okay. Aha, so, that pairs nicely. <laughs> that's right. Loophole. <laughs> this has thicker tobacco, so even though it has less volume of tobacco, it's a smaller ring gauge, little bit longer but smaller ring gauge, less mass of tobaccos, probably about 14, 15 grams compared to that one, which is probably closer to 16, 18 grams of tobacco. Is it unheard of to have people light a cigar and never really necessarily smoke it so much as just uh, you enjoy holding it and, and, and enjoying it? You guys that chew on them, you know? Yeah, absolutely. People will just chew a cigar, breathe through the cigar. Uh, that cold draw has its own flavor experience, and absolutely. Once you pay for the cigar, you can enjoy it however you want. You chop it up and just snort it like a yeah, lion. Yeah, as Bill Clinton demonstrated for us <laughs> back in the 90s. <laughs> so you got the tobacconist to help you select the right cigar. You wanted one that was a little stronger. You wanted one that was a little bit milder in terms of strength. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to cut the cigar. So you've paid for it. You now have the, the right to put your mouth onto the cigar. Before you put it in your mouth, especially if you don't own your own cutter, because you don't want to put a cigar in your mouth and then contaminate the cutter with your saliva. Oh, right? interesting. So this is an etiquette thing that you'll do at the tobacconist. That's right. You've taken the cellophane off, you've inspected the cigar, because enjoying a cigar is a sensory experience. You're gonna use your eyes, you're gonna use your ears, and you're gonna use your taste. So the very first thing we're gonna do before we put our mouth on it is we're going to visually inspect the cigar. And what you're looking for are those things that we learned kind of the last time we talked. Is, is it darker? Is it lighter? You know a little bit about the country it came from, what kind of tobaccos it has, what shape it is, how long it is. Well, the main thing you're doing now that you own the cigar is you're touching it and you're feeling it to see if there's any soft spots. You don't want to find any soft spots because those soft spots will not burn evenly and it'll create a bad experience. And I've had that on some cigars where it's like all of a sudden it goes malformed and I always thought that I was, that I was smoking, smoking it wrong. wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it could be that you didn't light it correctly but most often what that is is that the blend itself is not have a good balance of combustible tobacco and thicker tobaccos or it was not manufactured correctly. Or you could have dropped it. Or you could have dropped it. Okay. All, all of these possible. All of the above. If you've purchased a cigar and you find a soft spot, a lot of times the tobaccos will just trade that out for another cigar for you. So, and that's not too much of a choochy thing to no, say? No, not at uh, all. Oh, is this soft spot supposed to be there? Yeah, and you ask them, they'll tell you. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, it is a handmade product, so it's not going to be perfect all the time. So what you're trying to do is find out early in the process whether there's any problems with it. You don't want to put your fingers all over a cigar you haven't purchased, but once you've purchased it and you start touching it and you find a really bad soft spot or you find that it's cracked or, or that the wrapper's been damaged, a lot of times the, the tobacconist will just trade that out for And I assume cigar. that that's baked into the price, right? Absolutely. It doesn't happen often, but you do want to do that. You want to go through that process. Right. So this cigar, what we're looking at here, our cigars are a little more on the rustic side because we're more focused on flavor than aesthetics. And the last time we talked, you smoked a Davidoff. That is a beautiful, beautiful cigar with a near perfect wrapper. But you're also paying, like I said, up to $500 for one cigar in that brand. Uh, this cigar that you're smoking is around $7. This cigar is also around seven, seven and a half dollars From a visual perspective, what you're seeing is that it's well fermented, it has an even color, and there's no green spots, there's no indication that the tobacco is young or hasn't been properly uh, fermented. Now, I know that we keep cigars in humidors to keep them moist, right? Is, is there a way to, 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 I assume as you're touching it, if it crunches, that's a bad, a bad that thing? That goes to the second sense, your ability to hear. So when you, when you roll a cigar, gently squeeze the cigar and roll it, uh, what you're listening for is a little bit of a, like a crinkle but not, not a lot. Not a lot. Not, a not, like not autumn leaves. Yeah, right, that's exactly. what I was say. Exactly. Yeah. So this is a cigar, because it has, does have a little bit of a crack in it, it's not too wet. An over-human cigar is worse than a dry cigar. Okay. An over-human cigar is, is, is gonna ruin the flavor, it's not gonna burn correctly, and it may have mold and other problems, right? So the reason why you humidify cigars is so that they don't dry out. When a cigar dries out, the oils and other things, the resins in the tobacco will evaporate and you're left with it basically paper. paper. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, you're 
burning autumn leaves. Yeah. These cigars are properly humidified. We keep them here between 65 and 75% humidity. Depending on the type of wrapper, the more fragile wrappers, we keep it a little bit higher humidity. These thicker wrappers, we keep it a little bit lower humidity for the cigars that we're gonna smoke. General rule of thumb is about 70 degrees uh, temperature and 70 degrees humidity. Right. The other thing that you don't want, like Mike said, is a high temperature. Because while humidity is relative and it changes with temperature, the heat will actually cause a, the biggest problem with cigars, which is all tobacco is, is susceptible to having tobacco beetle larva. Blah, 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 blah. So, <laughs> this escalated quickly. Yes. <laughs> so if your cigars go above 82, 84 degrees Fahrenheit, those larvae will hatch and you will have beetles in your tobacco. This is but not otherwise good. they're just dormant little friendly bugs that you can smoke and enjoy along with the other. Well, like like the, the wasp eggs and fig newtons that used to be. <laughs> Do you remember that? Was that a thing? Oh, did you not know? Yeah. That was real? Have you ever eaten a fig newton and had a little crunchy bit in there? Yeah. Wasp egg. No. <laughs> no. So now, no! So now that, we've, now that we've visually inspected the cigar and we have uh, listen to see if it was properly humidified. Now what we're gonna do is smell the cigar, use our sense of smell, and we're going to cut and light the cigar. So, yeah. and what are we looking for when we smell? Because basically every time I smell, I guess I guess we can discern whether it's mild or more robust, right? I usually smell mine with the wrapper on, but I guess <laughs> we're not doing that here. That's well, well the first thing you wanna do is you wanna take the cellophane off. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, well, agree to disagree. So the main thing you're looking for, the tobacco that's used in a cigar is cured, I mean it's dried out, that's why it's not green. The, the leaves are obviously green. As it's cured, the chlorophyll in most cigars leaves this, the cigar and it becomes a nice even brown color. At that point, it's put into a what's called a pilon or in the fermentation process, which is very much like your backyard compost heap. It uses the pressure and the weight of tobacco along with a little bit of humidity and it creates an organic uh, fermentation process, much like what happens in beer, whiskey. I'm struck by how different the scents are from the filler versus uh, the wrapper, right? You yeah. Sweetness. Yeah. Two, two yeah. completely different. The, the filler in this instance is gonna be a little peppery. It's gonna make your nose tingle a little bit. Uh, and the wrapper is gonna be a little more sweet or bitter in the case of Ecuador, Connecticut, like a cup of espresso. But what you don't, what you don't wanna smell is you don't wanna smell ammonia. Ammonia is an off-gas product of an under-fermented tobacco. And tobacco that hasn't been properly cured or fermented, or tobacco that is too, what they call young or green, is gonna have a, a very strong ammonia aroma to it. And that's a sure sign that it's not gonna be a good cigar. It'll burn your nose right mm. away. Oh, right. okay. So you'll, you'll know pretty you'll much know. immediately. Like yeah. cat pee. All right, so oh. we've felt it, oh. we've smelled it, and we dealt it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it. And there's actually a couple of etiquette things around cutting cigars, and there's a couple of functional things that you need to know. A Parejo can be cut with almost any cutter. Okay. A Figurado cannot be cut with some types of cutters. So the one type of cutter, which is common in the United States, is called a punch cutter. The cigar, especially a Pareo, has a, on the crown, it has a cap, which is just a little piece of the cigar leaf that has a, that goes around the shoulder of the top of the cigar. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, that's definitely from a different part of the, that's a it's different from, piece put on it's top. It's from the same leaf, but from a different piece. Got it. So but what you want to do is you want to cut that cap off, expose the filler without cutting beyond the shoulder. Because if you cut beyond the shoulder, the cigar will start to unravel. It starts to come apart. Got right. it. Especially for a novice, a punch is a great cutter because it allows you to take a Parejo cigar and it allows you to put a hole into the cap of the cigar. And it allows you to do that to expose the filler without damaging the shoulder of the cigar. And so, so this this, is... this will actually just take a piece of the kind of like a bio skin biopsy. Oh, mm -hmm. got it. So you only need to get it deep enough that that it's just got the whole cap, and then when you pull it off, the cap will come off with it. That's right. And now. When yeah. you put this in your mouth, you can actually draw air through the cigar. And clearly, you can't do that with a figurato. Right, the punch won't work yeah. on, on a uh, on figurato. Yeah. Right. Another type of cut is called a V-cut. And this cigar, th what this does is it actually creates a channel in the top of the cigar. I'm not a big fan of this kind because when you actually keep the cigar in your mouth a lot, it breaks down 
and it becomes kind of a soggy mess. It's less structurally, has less integrity than the, right. the punch makes You possible. start to get uh, little bits of tobacco in your lips and everything. Right. And it also damages the cap of the cigar if you don't do it perfectly with a very good V cutter. And most V cutters are not good. Uh, Zycar and Calibri, they make some really good V cutters. The benefit of a V cutter is it creates more surface area for the smoke to come out. So you get more volume of smoke. So certain types of cigars, don't generate as much tobacco or as much smoke as others. So having that additional surface area, the additional airflow allows you to enjoy more of the smoke and more of the flavor. So uh, what a V-cut essentially does is it just takes a channel out, out of the cigar, and I'll do it with this one. It'll take a channel out of the cigar, but you can see what oh, happens here. Oh, yeah, that is, that is much more free flow than you would get from just the punch. Right, but you can see that as you have it in your mouth, it could, it could compress and break down. And also, I've just deformed a part of the shoulder of the cigar. If you know what you're doing, or if you have your tobacconist cut your cigar for you, it's a perfectly acceptable, especially with a cigar like this, that doesn't generate as much uh, volume of smoke because it's lower priming uh, leaves. Most common type of cutter is called a guillotine cutter. This cutter is great. It's very simple to operate with your two fingers. It has two blades that, that come across, and essentially allows you to cut the very edge of the top of the cigar, or it allows you to cut little piece of a figurato off the top like that. Got it. Just the tip, Brian. That's now true. on a figurato, there is no shoulder. So you can cut it down as far as you want. Obviously, you don't want to cut it down to here because then you're basically just creating a parejo. Right. Um, and you've wasted about 45 cents worth of cigar. <laughs> sure. Ah. I think if you learn how to use these cutters from the beginning, they're the very best. That looks like a surgical implant. Yeah. This is a pair of scissors. It's called an MTX tool from Zycar. It's about $50. This allows you to, to cut any type of cigar and allows you to, to be very precise. You notice with the guillotine cutter, you can't always see what's happening underneath the blades. Right. But the scissor cutters allow you to see exactly where you're cutting. So if you were cutting a Parejo cigar like this one, you can get it exactly precise as you want about where on the shoulder. Yeah, there's there's no way you could do that with the guillotine cutter that precise, right? Right. So essentially what I've done is create an opening much like the punch cutter, but I've done it a much broader open area. However, every tobacconist is going to have a cutter at the counter. Hopefully that has not been contaminated with the saliva of other people because they don't let chooches cut their own cigars. <laughs> so you don't have to have a cigar, a cigar cutter to enjoy a cigar. If you, if you smoke one cigar a month, you can ask your tobacconist to cut your cigar for you. They'll put it into a Ziploc bag with a little humidity device. And later when you're ready to enjoy it, it's already pre-cut. So if you're at home and you don't have one of these implements, is there a way to MacGyver your way through? Yeah, you can use a fingernail, you can use your teeth. There's a lot of ways you can cut a cigar. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the image that I always have is, you know, after machine gunning down everyone, you're biting the tip yeah, off uh, yeah. and then smoking, right? That's absolutely- That sounds horrible. But is that, that's that's acceptable, right? If you're when, on your when, back porch? When you're in a tobacco field in the middle of Nicaragua looking at uh, plants, uh, very often just your fingernail or your teeth is, becomes the device you use. Now, you were saying something earlier about after you cut it, uh, taking a cold draw. Right, so at this point, it's already been cut. You can put it in your mouth. What you're trying to do is just see if you can detect some of the flavors of the cigar uh, as the air passes through the tobacco. <laughs> I tried to inhale, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> now at this point, it's a good, you know, you're not gonna get smoke. So what you're trying to do here is to get the aroma uh, by smelling the foot of the cigar, by drawing through the cigar. At this point, like I said, you own it, you can touch it to any orifice you want. So, so in this in this situation right now... He's not now, gonna judge. No judging. But if, for example, if you put that in and you did a, a cold draw and no air was coming through, you may have to go down and cut a little bit more oh, if you more. own your own cutter. Yeah, yeah, okay. Also a great point because if, that, if it's not drawing before it's lit, it's a problem. It's another point where you may want to exchange it with your retailer. Uh, they may take the other end of the cigar, draw through it, and go, yeah, you're absolutely right, it's plugged. So I guess what we're also getting is a preview of the airflow that's gonna go mm -hmm. through, whether it's, yeah. I, I assume that there are some that are packed tighter and looser than others. That's right. And uh, also proper form, you said uh, grip it with your teeth and then wrap your lips around it. All right. That's right. Because what you're doing is your teeth is the best thing to hold the cigar, but the lips create the closure that allows you to create the Don't use the your lips as a 
grabbing device. Use your, your teeth are for grabbing, your lips are for providing the seal. That's right. Okay. Is there a difference between, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the gambler versus the smoking man versus? No, there's, there's actually personality tests based on how you hold the cigar. So. I like mine like this. <laughs> like, that no. works too. Like, we, call that the, like, we call that the kazoo. The kazoo. <laughs> Uh, because I, I have, and I know in cigarettes, I think it's more of a European style to hold them like this. I've always, I've always liked this underhand grip. I don't know why. Whatever becomes comfortable for you. There's no choochy way to hold a cigar, oh, unless good. maybe don't put your pinky out and it's... don't hold it with two hands. Like And don't use a roach clip. That's probably general bad, bad form. So uh, what's next? I guess we we light. So now you're gonna light the cigar, and again, there's some options here, and there's periods, there's times, or situations where you're gonna use one or the other. You can use anything that creates fire, but if the fuel of the thing that's creating fire has a strong odor, it's gonna contaminate the cigar. So you don't wanna use something like a Zippo or your kitchen stove. Oh, oh man, okay. yeah, no, as, as a fire eater, I can attest that, that that fuel, the same Zippo lighter fluid, whenever I do the fire eating act, I am burping up that taste for the rest of the day the sulfur on a match will contaminate a cigar. So if you use a match, generally what you'll see is someone will light the match, wait for it to, the sulfur to burn away, and then uh, use the match. Or they'll light what's called a split, which is a small piece of cedar, which they light the cigar from the split. Um, it also creates your, an aroma as yeah. well. Yeah, it, it, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, for me, I don't really use matches or cedar splits. Generally, I'll use a butane lighter. Butane is odorless, tasteless, it burns efficiently. And what we have here are three kinds of butane lighters. There are jet flame lighters and there are soft flame lighters. Soft flame lighters are generally better for delicate wrappers like this one. Lighter tobaccos, they're gonna burn easy. Sometimes with heavier tobaccos like the Neanderthal you smoked in the, mm -hmm. the last episode, you almost need a blowtorch to get that one going. And I would imagine the situation that you're in, if you're on a windy deck, you're probably not gonna want a soft, uh, and I assume a soft lighter is like a traditional Bic or a Scripto, is that a thing? Yeah, yeah. either or. Um, so I generally use a soft uh, flame lighter. A Bic is perfectly fine. You don't need anything super fancy. Mm -hmm. In fact, sometimes these are more dependable than lighters that cost hundreds of dollars. The heavier tobaccos, you're gonna use a blue butane lighter. This is an example of a jet lighter. It has two jet flame outputs that cross each other so that it creates a kind of a pinnacle of where you're, where you're gonna light the cigar. Uh, this one, you're gonna go through gas pretty quickly. This is an example of a very fancy uh, lighter from uh, DuPont. It is a soft flame that could be used on a pipe for pipe smoking or uh, cigar smoking. Well, what is it about this design that's making such a wide flame? It's, it's specifically designed to be a wide flame. It's it has, the, yeah. it's the- uh, The valve right at the top? Exactly. Specifically for cigars. Or for pipes. Oh, okay. When we spoke previously, you had mentioned that you want to light the flame away from it and get in close enough and have the airflow draw it in. You don't just want to light the end. Yeah, the very first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to toast the cigar. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the flame, gently touch the, the tip of the flame to the edge of the cigar, just in order to char the end of the tobacco to kind of get it to where it's going to evenly light. You're trying not to burn the wrapper so much, just the, the end of the filler there. So you can see here, it's all black, it's smoldering a little bit, that's good to go to start. I would imagine that the difference is, if you just went up and just started lighting and, and puffing on it, you might light just one half of it or one side and kind of screw up the experience? Yeah, the cigar may not correct and may burn unevenly. So what you're gonna do at that point is you're gonna put it between your teeth, put the flame of this, this, the lighter a little bit off the edge of your cigar, and you'll see as I draw into the cigar, you'll see the flame kind of be drawn and grow from the, from the fuel of the oxygen coming through the cigar. And that's the perfect distance. As he blocks the camera. <laughs> the other thing that's really important about that, the reason why you come kind of at an angle is you don't want particles dropping and falling into the actual lighter. Right. Oh, causing, because that'll affect the yeah, performance, right, yeah. yeah. Right, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn it around, make sure that uh, after you draw on it that it's all completely evenly lit. If you need to help it out a little bit, you can blow on the end of it to, to kind of even out the edges. But this is this one's perfectly well lit and is off to off to the races. Now, will it just keep on smoldering on its own or it'll put itself out unless you draw every so often? Yeah, that's one of the things is you have to take regular, consistent, periodic draws on the cigar because, because it is 100% tobacco, it will just go out by itself. Not like a cigarette. Yeah, and that gives us to another etiquette point. When you're done with a cigar, you respectfully sit it down, you let it go out, 
You don't smush it into the ashtray <laughs> like a chooch. So he, he looked at me when he said chooch. No, I was about to say, I'm a chooch oh, too. Oh, you, you're, you're this guy? I'm a chooch oh. too, I didn't know. No, and, and if there's not an ashtray, I've seen people balance it on the edge and just let itself mm -hmm. blow out. Yeah, that's, uh, I do that all the time. Um, the, the thing is, a cigar will go out. If you smush it out, it'll create a lot of hard cleanup and it'll also create a, a, a bad smell in the environment where other people are trying to smoke a cigar. And if you're not finished with it, then you really can't come back to it as easily if you've stubbed it. Yeah, it's hard to come back to a cigar because sometimes what happens is as the cigar burns, the, the impurities kind of come through the cigar. And if you let it go out, some of those things will settle into the cigar. So if you do find that it's perfectly okay to relight a cigar, what you want to do is get the ash off of the cigar uh, naturally, what will come off. You're going to burn a little bit of the impurities off, and then when you light it, you're actually going to blow out instead of drawing in. And to that, get rid of all the impurities. That will get rid of the impurities as you relight it. Sometimes you get involved in a conversation or do, filming a podcast and you let it go out. But good cigars, generally, if you draw on them once every minute or so, they'll, they'll stay lit. So once we get past that initial draw, in fact, should we, should we go ahead and start the initial? Yeah. And uh, what, uh, what are we looking for uh, as far as flavors once we uh, light it up? So flavor is completely subjective. Really, there's only five flavors. There's sweet, sour, spicy, bitter, and umami, some will say. So you're saying you should fill these with MSG <laughs> and get a very umami rich experience. What, what you're really gonna experience is savoriness, earthiness, basically the, the, those are the, now look the at components it. of tobacco. And then blow into it. See how that's a little bit black on the edge there? Yeah. So you, you need to light it a little, bit, a little bit more. Okay. So meanwhile, I'm still, I guess, uh, charring the very tip there. I assume that you wanna get a fairly even ring of just a few embers on the outside? They call that toasting. Toasting, got it. Yeah, yeah so the, now you're good to go. Now your draw is gonna be a little bit tight in the beginning because it's a small ring gauge on the end. Yeah. There, and it'll open up as you smoke the cigar. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw the smoke in, being careful not to inhale, and you're gonna let that smoke kind of just float around your mouth a little bit. There's no real douchey way to do it. Just do it however lets you enjoy the cigar the best. Um, as you become more experienced smoking cigars, there's a process called uh, retrohaling where you actually pass the smoke past your olfactory through your nasal, and that'll allow you to taste it a, to a much greater extent. Take nice, slow, deliberate draw to put it in your teeth, right? close your mouth, give it a nice, deliberate kind of, hold the smoke in your mouth for about three to four seconds. Let the smoke gently kind of go out of your mouth. And once the smoke is gone, you want to put the tongue to the top of your roof of your mouth and just kind of give it a little smack. But not smacking, but just get, and you'll start to, to detect a lot more flavor. It's astonishing how much of what you just described just happens naturally, right. right? Because it's pleasant to fill your mouth with the smoke. It's pleasant to let it just kind of get out. And then what I find myself doing is the very last bits of smoke, I'll close my lips and let the very last part pass uh, uh, out of my nose. Yeah, and what you're experiencing is three things at once. You're experiencing the mouth feel, the texture of the tobacco, how it, how it feels in your mouth, how it actually tastes to have the tobacco in your mouth. You're getting the smoke as it comes into your mouth and passes through and becomes oxygenated over different parts of your palate. You're getting the taste aspects from the other direction as you uh, smell the tobacco and the, the aroma. Smoke itself is not pleasant. So you wanna be in an environment that's well ventilated where the smoke is venting off. Uh, you don't want the smoke burning your eyes. You don't want the smoke overwhelming because it, too much smoke will actually negatively impact your smoke, smoking experience. You want to have the smoke for a short period of time and then have that smoke go away. Now, about how long do I have in between draws? Because being an inexperienced cigar smoker, you know, maybe, I don't know, once or twice a year, it seems like I always end up talking too long and then I run out of time. Is there, is there sort of a, a maintenance uh, puff I should it's take? like once per minute is what you were saying, It's right? about that. It really depends on the blend. Heavier tobaccos would be a little more frequent. Lighter tobaccos a little bit less frequent. I guess the lesson is just uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, be a good steward. Yeah, and every now and then you've either had wind blowing at you from one side and, and the, the burn goes a little bit skewy. You can take your lighter. Generally, this is where butane lighters come in more handy and you can specifically touch up parts of the wrapper that aren't burning equally. Oh yeah, like like for example, right now, I'm a little bit imbalanced. You can see I'm heavier yeah, on that one, side. That one will correct itself. Okay. That, that cigar in particular starts out without a wrapper on the end, mm -hmm. so it burns a little uneven in the very beginning. 
because the wrapper in this case actually helps the combustion a little well, bit. What you would typically do in that situation is just rotate it in your fingers. Yep, right? draw so, from a different direction. Oh, because heat rises, of right. course. Oh, sure, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm dumb, you would think I would know that. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you get where it's burning really fast down one side, you can lick your finger and put it kind of ahead of that burning spot and it'll make that side burn a little bit slower. Oh, okay, Oh, that's brilliant. Now, here's a really important thing that every new cigar smoker should learn. Nicotine has an impact on your body that affects your blood sugar. And that's what gives you the nausea and the dizziness and the, the, uh, the weird feeling like you're getting sick. Sometimes if you've selected a cigar that has too much tobacco or you're eating, uh, you haven't eaten anything or you're not pairing it with something, Sometimes you'll get a little bit of uh, that nicotine kind of overwhelming Dizziness. sickness. Yeah, well, and I've heard that that's even a problem for people harvesting the nicotine. They're touching it all day, it's all over their bodies, and then at the end of the day, they feel terrible. Yeah, yeah I mean, what you can do is if you find that you're, you're getting a little bit nauseous, just sit the cigar down, let your body catch up. If it gets real bad is you can take a little bit of sugar, like raw sugar, and put it under your tongue. It'll dissolve, it'll immediately put sugar into your bloodstream, and it'll correct the nausea really fast. I'm not going to say that tobacco is healthy, particularly if you don't use tobacco in, in moderation, but there are no studies that indicate that a moderate use, one, two cigars a week, is any more dangerous than a baseline of a non-tobacco user. There are a little bit of an increased risk of mouth and throat cancers, uh, depending on how much you smoke, but uh, even the FDA's own recent study indicated that moderate use of, of premium tobacco that consists only of tobacco and vegetable gum in a well-ventilated area does not increase your baseline risk for any other disease. You know, I wouldn't want my developing uh, children to be exposed to a lot of smoke or to, in, to use tobacco products, but you know, smoking one cigar a week or one a day is probably not any more dangerous to, to you than, smoke, say, drinking one beer a day. Etiquette thing. I notice all my smoke is going right in his face. Yeah, that's bad etiquette. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'll so, be over here. Sometimes, I mean, he may be enjoying it, so. I didn't even notice until you brought it yeah. up. Now I'm just like, that chooch. <laughs> <laughs> that dirty chooch. Really, the only thing that doesn't go well with cigars is something that's dairy, because the lactose covers your palate, and it's just not a pleasant Oh, thing. you get a really phlegmy experience? Right. Milk was a bad idea. <laughs> if you find that you're getting weird flavors out of the cigars, it could be something as simple as like your toothpaste. Toothpaste has a thing in it called sodium lauryl sulfate. And this is actually what creates bubbles in almost anything that bubbles or lathers. If you do smoke cigars on a regular basis, you can buy a type of toothpaste called SLS free toothpaste, which I recommend anyway. So it, it eliminates that chemical that creates a, a surface tension for the bubbles. and I don't know if you've ever had an orange juice after brushing yes. your teeth. Yes, oh, I was just about to say yes. that. Yeah. Like the worst flavor in the world. Right, and those little things can affect how you taste cigars. The best thing to drink with a cigar is uh, some type of mineral or uh, carbonated water hmm. because the actual bubble action actually cleanses the palate at the same time as you're smoking. But there's things like rum, or coffee or things that are grown or cultivated in the same place that the tobacco was cultivated and there's this synergy that happens between oh, the flavors. Okay. Yeah. Is there a right time to know when to ash? Because it seems my small experience has been that I ash and then it just goes straight out. But when it when I let there remain an ash, it seems like it it, it stands up a little bit longer. So the ash actually keeps the the uh, embers cool. It has a physical mechanical benefit to smoking a cigar. It's like insulation, basically. The general rule is the ash falls off when it falls off. Okay. As a practical rule, you don't necessarily want ashes all over your car or all over your clothes. So when you when you when you have a little more experience smoking, you, you realize kind of when the ash is getting sketchy and you'll just very gently tap it off. Long filler cigars, the ash can become and cigars with heavier wrapper leaves. I could smoke this cigar down to here and have nothing but ash. Uh, that's actually a classic uh, magic gag is you take a hat pin or a very long needle and put it in beforehand and then you're able to get the ash even on any cigar all the way down there. Sometimes the ash whenever it's not ready to go so when you go to try to tap it and it doesn't let go it's not quite ready. So don't force it. Don't for Don't yeah. ever rub it against the side of the, the ashtray. Don't tap it really hard. If it, it, if it doesn't fall off with just a little tap like that then it's, it's not, not ready. ready to fall off. Okay. When you tap it off like that sometimes 
you just give it a little blow. Ah. You make sure that it's still all red. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I never thought about that because I often think like, well, I'm not ready for another another draw on it. And so I don't, and then it just goes out. Mm -hmm. But just blowing on the other side makes perfect sense. If you get really get into cigars and you start exploring the different countries and you start exploring and you find cigars that you really, really like and you want to have one available to you all the time, you're going to want to get your own humidor. So we've talked about the cutters and the lighters. Something as simple as a Ziploc bag with a Boveda humidification device. Hey, wait, 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 wait. What is a Boveda humidification a, device? A, a Boveda humidif humidification device is a little piece of uh, paper pouch that has a saline solution that releases and absorbs humidity. Oh, it's, it's kind of oh, like the okay. silica packets in beef jerky. That's well, th those are actually desiccants. They yeah, actually that's the opposite. The reverse. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, all right, all right. All right. Uh, a Bovita pack will actually release and absorb humidity to keep your cigars in optimal condition. So it's so like I said, something as simple, if you have your cigars in cellophane, you put them in a Ziploc bag, you put one of those little 50 cent humida packs in there, put them in a sock drawer, they'll be perfectly fine for foot. months. Or you can buy something as simple as this, maybe 15 to $30, it's a plastic case. You can put a Boveda, or it has its own little humidification device here, and you can keep six to nine cigars in something like this that you can carry around with you. Just keep it out of the extreme heat. This, for example, is a is a black walnut humidor. It's a very stable. Is uh, my face gonna melt if I look directly into it? You can, you can. It's not like the Ark of the Covenant, but you can lift it up. It's very substantial, very heavy. It's the wood. box from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and, and all you need is a little bit of distilled water. You know, for something like this, you just kind of pour it in here, and so oh, pop into out. The, into the a little Boveda distilled device. water will help keep it humid. This is a Boveda packet. I actually use these in my humidor. Oh, okay. Uh, this humidor here is made by Vandenberg. It's probably $1,500, $2,000. I'll just keep mine in the actual Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> I, I, got, I got bags. I have Ziploc bags. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, basically at that point, you, you're, you know enough to purchase, to select, purchase, cut, light, and uh, enjoy a cigar. That's everything. Dude, we did it. It's like we pierced the veil. It's like we're part of some secret society now. And I Man. don't have to walk in in shame and be like, mm, I guess I'll just take this one. I'm not going to ask any questions. All right, so if people at home want to experience the exact cigars that we're enjoying right now, what's the best way for them to do it? So our cigars are available um, at most of the best retail tobacconists across the United States. Uh, Dominican Republic and 14 countries in uh, the European Union. Wow. Roma uh, Craft Tobacco. That's right. We have four brands in Temperance, which is the EC and the BA that we're enjoying today, the Neanderthal, which you smoked in the last episode, uh, the Cro-Magnon, and the Cro-Magnon Aquitaine. And then if you're in Europe, we have another brand called Wonderlust. So we're starting a Modern Rogue Cigar Club? I think we already did, right? <laughs> I think we could just I have think we're at it. <laughs> Charter members. <laughs>